Welcome to another edition of Daily Airline News, focusing on the loss of Air India Flight 171. I'm Geoffrey Thomas, and I'm delighted to say, once again, joined by my co-host Richard Godfrey in Frankfurt, Germany. Good morning to you, Richard. And good afternoon to you, Geoffrey. So, viewers, the episode 195 today is Toilet Issues, and we have to give many thanks to our viewer Kent Davis for his help in putting this episode together. Viewers of the last three Air India episodes, 191, 93 and 94, have made over 2,000 comments and given us 4,800 likes. Viewers have focused on the following issues. The pilot or pilots, 866, and in particular the captain, 198. 31 discuss suicide, 30 discuss pilot error. The fuel switches at 588 and cut off at 55. The preliminary report and final report, 539. The RAT, 389, and when it was deployed, 119. Joe Linux 2000 made 91 comments and replies, followed by the Trim Doctor with 64. In third place was our moderators uh, at Jeffrey Thomas, and that can be me or Richard, more likely Richard, with 53 replies. Captain Steve has mentioned 29 times. Jeremy John Thompson's favourite word diode is mentioned 19 times. Viewers are mostly convinced by our plausible hypothesis that water ingress caused an electrical problem. Electrical is mentioned 311 times and water is mentioned 137 times. But some viewers are not happy. Brad Wessels, 8582, another useless effort. Skip Baker, the captain did it. And Keith SV says YouTube is trying to make money from a tragedy by intentionally spreading misinformation appalling. We will look at the Boeing 7878 Lantam flight LA603 on the 31st of July 2025 when the rat deployed in an emergency landing as soon as the preliminary report comes out on or about the 31st of August. Robert Lund, D7D, I think Richard needs to change his T-shirt. And I did, Shaw, I did. You did, I know, <laughs> i got to change mine then. Shaw Kins, do you guys ever launder your shirts? Well, yes, I do. I've got many black T-shirts, so don't worry. They are clean every day. Um, so, Richard. Yeah, after six months, I thought I'd better change my shirt. But uh, like you, Jeffrey, I have a wardrobe full of dark blue, so I don't know how people work out which dark blue shirt I was wearing. But anyway, this is light blue, so you can tell the difference. Absolutely. So let's look at some of the aircraft accidents involving toilets. Richard, what happened to Northwest Airlines Flight 5 in 1990? Well, uh, this is uh, a toilet uh, fluid incident which caused engine damage, and I find that quite amazing. Um, a maintenance error left a seal uh, missing on the forward lavatory external service panel on a Boeing 727. The lavatory uh, fluid leaked, froze in the airstream and ice was ingested by the starboard engine causing it to fail and separate from the aircraft in mid-flight. Fortunately, the plane made a safe emergency landing with no injuries reported. The failure mode occurred by design. The engine is designed to separate uh, in the event of uh, a total failure and, and damage in order to preserve the aircraft integrity. Wow. What about the Varig flight 820? That was, I think, in 1973. Yeah. Uh, th this was a fatal crash um, because of a lavatory fire. Uh, a Boeing 707 experienced a... A fire in the rear lavatory, believed to have been started by a lit cigarette just being dropped into the waste bin. The resulting smoke filled the cabin and forced an emergency landing 
in a field short of uh, Paris uh, Orly Airport. And tragically, 123 of the 134 people on board died and mostly from smoke inhalation. And this disaster pr uh, prompted the aviation regulations requiring no smoking placards in lavatories and installation of ashtrays and regular inspections. And eventually, these changes paved the way towards the global in-flight smoking ban, which came in force uh, uh, some 35 years later in 2008. The captain of the flight, uh, Gilberto Arrujo da Silva, was hailed for his exceptional piloting under catastrophic conditions and executed a precise forced landing and likely prevented greater loss of life on the ground. In a tragic twist, Captain de Silva disappeared six years later, vanishing with his crew on a Varig uh, Flight 967, a cargo uh, Boeing 707, during a flight over the Pacific in 1979. Neither the aircraft nor its occupants were ever found, and it's reminiscent of uh, the disappearance of MH370 in some ways, but at least uh, for MH370 we have uh, some debris and some electronic traces of uh, MH370, but there was nothing ever found of Varig 967. We've actually mentioned that Varig flight in our um, coverage of missing uh, missing aircraft. Um, that was a flight that took off from Tokyo. Yep, that's memory, correct. Memory, memory serves me correctly, yes. Yeah. So, Richard, uh, Air Canada 797, this is in 1983. This was another lavatory fire where smoke spread. I think it was a DC-9 for memory. So, so what happened to that flight? Yeah, um, it was indeed a DC-9 and a fire began in or near the lavatory area and produced toxic smoke that disabled cockpit instruments. Um, the flight crew initiated an emergency descent and diverted to Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky International Airport. Um, by that time, smoke had invaded the cockpit and vital systems were failing. The plane made an emergency landing, but when they opened the cabin door, there was a flashover, and that led to 23 fatalities from smoke and, and burns. The sudden influx of oxygen triggered a flash fire or a backdraft engulfing the cabin and that was only 60 to 90 seconds after the evacuation had begun. The incident led to regulations for lavatory smoke detectors, better cabin evacuation protocols, and crew, and crew training. Mm. Now, we've also got the Delta Airlines Flight 211 in 2022, frozen lavatory drain mask leading to aerolon control loss. Perhaps you can yeah. walk us through that one. It's strange, isn't it? You wouldn't think that the lavatory drain uh, getting blocked would uh, lead to an aileron control loss, but the no. Boeing 767-300ER experienced flooding in the lavatory areas um, due to a failed drain mast heater. So while flying over southern Greenland, the cabin crew noticed the flooding in both the mid-cabin and forward left lavatories. The water froze near critical control components in the wheel well, and that caused a near total loss of aileron control and autopilot disconnection. The crew declared an emergency, descended to lower and warmer air, and control was restored, um, allowing a safe landing. The aircraft diverted to Gander Airport in Newfoundland, 
and descending through approximately 12,000 feet, the crew experienced a slight jolt and were able to regain manual control of the aircraft. And after control was restored, uh, the emergency was cancelled and the flight continued and landed at JFK about an hour behind schedule. The NTSB found the cause was a maintenance error. Technicians had left circuit breakers for the forward and aft lavatory drain mast heaters open, and this caused ice to form in the forward drain mast. Ice accumulation spread to the aileron system components, impairing roll control and triggering the autopilot and flight control issues. Cripes, it's just extraordinary how one or two little small oversights can then cascade into a, a failure like that. Indeed. Yeah. Now, there have been a number of notable operational disruptions, non-accident but safety-related uh, toilet malfunctions causing flights to turn back. Perhaps you can walk us through those, uh, Richard. Yeah, there's a, a quite a, a list and uh, multiple flights have had to divert or return to their uh, airport of departure simply because toilets were inoperable. Mm. So an in Air India flight 126 on the 5th of March this year, a plane returned to Chicago about an hour and 45 minutes into the flight because eight of the 12 toilets were clogged by polythene bags, rags, and, and clothes even. It was a Swiss International Flight 76, about an hour into its Zurich to Washington flight, and half the lavatories failed due to a plumbing issue, and the plane had to turn back uh, to Zurich. United Airlines on the 29th of March this year, a Frankfurt-bound flight turned back when a toilet overflowed, leading, leaking waste into the cabin. And there was another uh, United Airlines flight, uh, this time from Frankfurt to San Francisco, um, in an earlier instant, and uh, another instance involving a toilet malfunction, sending waste into the cabin and prompting a return. Now, there have been a number of low-severity lavatory failures leading to diversions, incidents where toilets being full or malfunctioning, resulting in pan declarations or returns, though without severe safety consequences. Yeah, there was a um, United uh, Flight 1219 in 2018 over the Pacific. All toilet failures indicated as full, and that prompted a return to San Francisco. And Air Canada uh, Rouge Flight 1901 in 2017, false uh, tank full indications led to a diversion to Montreal before continuing. And I think the most amusing one was Norwegian Air Shuttle Flight 1156 in 2018, returned to Oslo shortly after takeoff because of toilet faults. And ironically, the plane was carrying 85 plumbers uh, on board. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes. That's interesting. It's sort of, you know, you, it would sort of make a twist. Normally the cabin crew call for, is there a doctor on board? You know, call for, a, is there a plumber on board? Yeah. You get 80, 85 answers, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, Richard, what are the key takeaways from all these incidents from in your perspective? Yeah, well, toilet systems matter. And what seems trivial can escalate into serious safety events or even accidents. And both the maintenance procedures and passenger compliance uh, most passengers these days do comply with the smoking ban, but there are also um, toilet disposal uh, regulations that passengers need to comply with. You can't put clothes or, or certain polythene bags down the toilet. 
Um, lavatory fires and plumbing failures have historically led to fatalities and major regulation changes and improvements. More commonly today, after the smoking ban's been implemented, the toilet malfunctions just simply disrupt operations. But there are a huge number of diversions or returns to the departure airport, and if for no other reason, passenger comfort and hygiene. It's interesting to note that China and some smaller regional carriers in Africa, Middle East and Central Asia still allowed smoking well into the mid 2000s. But by 2008, all IATA member airlines were required to enforce the ban. Now, more recently, e-cigarettes and vapes have come in and they were banned on 83% of commercial airlines worldwide by 2018. And today, today it's supposed to be a 100% ban. But nevertheless, on charter, private and VIP flights, uh, the operator uh, may, at uh, the operator's discretion, still allow smoking. So it's not a complete ban. So in summary, what was the worst accident, aircraft accident ever in terms of fatalities due to a problem in the toilets, either leakage or fire? Well, it was the Varig Flight 820 on the 11th of July 1973, a Boeing 707 from Rio to Paris Orly, and there were unfortunately 123 fatalities. Mm. But if the Air India Flight 171 on the 12th of June this year is proven to be due to leakage from the toilets into the EE Bay, then with uh, 260 fatalities on the aircraft and on the ground, this will become the worst ever event of that uh, category. Yes, as you said earlier, Richard, you know, people probably don't really think too much about the toilets, but they have the potential to bring an aeroplane down and certainly, definitely the potential to have an aircraft diverted, particularly on a long flight where there's a certain ratio of toilets to passengers which the airline must comply with. So shutting one down on a 16-hour flight or something like that, it just, it just absolutely begs a diversion and that's all there is to it, particularly if the flight is full. If it's only half full, of course, then they'll they'll do the calculations and say we can continue. But it's terribly important to follow the crew's directions and the signage of, um, as you suggest, not putting anything down the toilet, like polyth polythene bags and clothes and stuff. And of course, don't do not whatever you do smoke in the toilets. Uh, it'll it can, I mean, a fire on board an aeroplane, as we've discussed many times, Richard. It's almost always fatal, and it's also very, very quick. Uh, it doesn't take yeah. long for a fire to take hold. And the smoke, as you've suggested here, uh, can be the bigger bigger killer of, of, of the whole, uh, you know, rather than the fire itself. Yeah, and people don't die from the crash. They die from the fire or the smoke. Yeah. Um, mm, indeed. Well, Richard, this has been a fascinating uh, episode today. And, of course, it relates to Air India 171, of course. And, uh, you know, yeah. special thanks to Kent Davis for uh, helping us put all this together um, with, uh, with a lot of uh, data. And um, so, yeah, thank you very much, Kent. And thank you, Richard, for putting it all together. You're welcome. So, viewers, that's all we've got time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with your questions. Um, and uh, so please subscribe to us, please like us, please keep those wonderful supportive comments coming. We do appreciate them. And, of course, keep those tremendous questions coming. They, uh, they're really great and they're helping us to move towards um, a solution, I guess, or, a, or an answer to what's happened to Air India 171. So we look forward to your company tomorrow. Thank you very much.